in the late, I guess at the late 50s or the early 60s, there was a thing called a twist. And I managed a rock and roll band at that time. And my mother and all of my mother's friends hated rock and roll. Hated it. Rock and roll was the worst. Rock and roll would lead to juvenile delinquency, venereal disease, drug addiction, um, broken marriages, and the end of the uh, family institution as we've known and loved it in America. So then the twist happens, right? And people in limousines are going to a place in New York called the Peppermint Lounge. And I had a band that was playing in the Peppermint Lounge at that time with Joey D and the Starlighters, who were the headline. And so all of a sudden, the same people who hated rock and roll loved the twist. They all ran to the fancy department stores and bought their twist dresses and, and spent a lot of money to go to twist nightclubs. Never once understanding, agreeing that rock and roll and the twist is exactly the same thing, except it's rock and roll. Call the twist. I think punk rock is rock and roll. In September of 1977, manager Peter Leeds raised over one half million dollars in cash to buy Blondie's recording rights. Within 60 days thereafter, the rights were picked up by Chrysalis Records and the band began a worldwide tour. Yeah, I knew Blondie was a star and I knew in order for them to reach the heights that were possible, you need the, the full and total cooperation of, of the record company. And that means really understanding what it takes to build an act to the level that I think Blondie will attain, having the same confidence in the act that I had, putting their money where their mouth was. The deal paid off fast as the group was rewarded with sellout crowds in almost every major city played. You know, you talk about sex and violence in their lyrics. I mean, sex and violence is a way of life in America and the world today. And the lyrics of Blondie's songs, which are all self-created, um, are reflecting that which is around them and that which they're around. And so, yeah, I suppose that's true. And the rock and roll that for so many years had be, you know, was boring, talking about whatever it was they were talking about, not being reflective of the world as it is, is a thing of the past. In Australia, coupled with a record company supported tour by manager Peter Leeds and lead singer Debbie Harry, Chrysalis re-released the Blondie single In the Flesh. The song climbed to number two nationally. Australia is one of the world's biggest record-buying markets. Their record going to number two in Australia very fast. Their album is a huge success in both Australia and Japan. That must reflect that, that there's wide appeal to Blondie. It's not a limited audience, it's wide. live at CBGB's in New York City. Here is Blondie's hit single, In the Flesh.
United States, the Ramones were historically the first punk group to crack the charts. Their single, Sheena is a Punk Rocker, became a top 100 hit and helped to break the barrier of resistance that had kept punk music off American radio stations. It is because of its power and simplicity that Ramones' music has often been compared to both minimalist sculpture and monolithic architecture. There is a need for raw, powerful, sexy, violent music, you know? Real rock and roll, I, like it was, you know, when, when with Elvis Presley, with the Stones, you know, when they first came out, it was excitement. And, uh, and that's what we're trying to bring back, the, the raw power of, uh, of music, of rock and roll. If their music has its roots in the basic power of early rock, its speed, strength, and directness is totally original. No one Ramones claims credit for the material, which they say they produce together. Well, somebody will come up with a lyric, somebody will come up with some chords, and uh, we'll keep the good stuff and uh, throw the bad stuff out. It's, uh, it's a good team, you know, because this way we, we all come up with uh, some really good songs. Their next single, Rockaway Beach, which was released in the winter of 1977, hit the top 100 within weeks after it came out. Subject is violence with songs like Chainsaw, Beat on the Brat, teenage lobotomy connotations of fascist warfare like Blitzkrieg, Bop, just a small part of the violence-oriented imagery that permeates the punk movement. It all has to do with what you regard as the value of irrational energies. Here's the way to phrase the question. Do you feel the byproducts and the antics or whatever else you want to call them of the punk movement, of the New Way movement, is that productive? Is that really... Productive, what does that mean? It is very dangerous. It could lead to fascism. All of that is really true. No, you laugh. All of that is really true. Yes, there is, there is an extraordinarily dangerous energy that these people are trying to unleash. How much of it there is in this country remains to be seen. Energy, but my own analysis energy, of the way yes, economics yes. and politics work is a damn right it's productive because I think that, that our economic system is completely rotten. And, and so... I'm willing to take the chance. Like the music's violent, but it, it, it's like, it gets all the aggression out of the kids. You know? Like after they see a show of ours, they're ready to collapse. No, what we're doing ain't uh, really destructive to where they think